this week's main objective is to make sure our pad, our sand pad for our water tank is done. There's a wide variety of different tanks that you can do when you're serious about harvesting water off your farm. Um, I've talked before about using IBC totes when it comes to price per gallon for storage capacity. IBC totes are actually really awesome. The problem is they're only 275 gallons or 330 gallons of storage. And we're talking about living off grid and really needing it. There's some mathematical equations that, uh, that we can do to you know, size the tank uh, to what we need. So uh, there's a lot of different factors that came into play today, actually over this last year, for why I chose to go with a tank that has a bladder. Um, so it's a Pioneer tank, 30,000 gallons, but the problem is, do I really want a bladder? That has caused a lot of issues already um, because that has its own specific needs for being built, the sand pad being one of them. Uh, ferro cement tanks are great, um, you know, really pretty much easy to put in almost anywhere. The problem is in our soil, our vertisol taxonomic soil, which basically means it's soil that opens up really big and then closes and then opens up really big every summer when it dries out and then closes as it rains. So it's like literally eating organic matter. That's why it's black. Um, so that's very problematic when it comes to setting up structures, putting a pad side in that's concrete, a slab or ferro cement tank. So it's not if it's going to crack, it's when it's going to crack. And so for holding water, we don't want a bunch of cracks. The Blackland Prairie where we're at um, has this vertisol a very clayey soil. Now it comes from a white, believe it or not, Austin chalk. Now first and foremost the vertisol taxonomic soil class is pretty rare, only 2% of the world has it. But it's ironic that it's bedrock type surface that it comes from is white. So it becomes black over time because it's eating all the organic matter. Um, but limestone base makes it very alkaline. Very interesting stuff to look into. We have just had tons of setbacks. Um, we're pretty far out, but uh, we've just been working with some folks, some earth movers, just not showing up, setback after setback. Um, you know, and then, and then we need the sand, and it has to be a specific type of sand so it doesn't have anything in it that punctures the bladder. So masonry sand is the spec called for by the manufacturer, and that's nowhere near us. And so we find out, you know, you can actually have screened or sifted cushion sand, but nobody screens it or, or sifts it around this area. So uh, it was just yesterday, finally found one place, get the stone, the sand, gravel, all one go. Um, and so waiting right now on the second half of that sand to show up. But man, it has been some serious setbacks. And you know, that's the reality of the situation. We make a permaculture design, we do a strategic plan, and then the plan has to be flexible because things change. At the same time, as they've changed, it's actually allowed me to look at it from different viewpoints and potentially save myself, you know, thousands of, or maybe tens of thousands of dollars by reworking some elements in different places, making something smaller or larger, and uh, just, you know, overall making better decisions. Uh, so, you know, the pro tip, make all the pre-decisions you can, plan, uh, doing the homework, and then in the process, make decisions as you go, right? Sounds like common sense, but if you don't think it that way, you get you know paralysis by analysis, uh, overthinking too much at the beginning, and you never actually start. Um, so having that flexibility to walk into a situation and it not working and you know shifting to where we get a somewhat desired result. Now, you know, since it's a manufactured tank, it does come with a warranty uh, where a ferro cement tank wouldn't. So I'm working with a licensed installer. His name is Steve. Um, now, I, after meeting him and speaking with him a few times, he's actually into permaculture. So he's really into this. So he agreed to come on and be a teacher and, and, and lead supervisor of our installation. 
and I've got uh, a couple buddies and myself, he's gonna lead and teach us how to do it. I've never put in a metal tank before, so um, this will be quite a very useful experience to see how it's done. Now, again, you have to have the, uh, uh, the license installer in order to sign off on it in order to get the warranty. So that's something to think about if you choose to go with the metal tank and maybe forego paying an installer um, say you like hey Nicholas show me who you got this from uh, which we got a pretty good deal actually um, and then I want to install it myself you won't get the warranty but uh, times like this it's it's good to make some friends you know come on out sometimes uh, hey maybe that's an invitation and uh, let's install some stuff together so you can learn how to do it now this portion of the tank install has been a few days processed uh, really grateful to Andrew hey Andrew hey how you doing we were able to lay out the stone uh, for the sand pad. And right now, <clears throat> I'm waiting for the skid steer uh, operator to, to show up so we can start sh -sh -sh -sh, uh, putting the sand into the circle uh, rel relatively, ra relatively rather quickly while I'm on a kind of time crunch this week. So uh, that's where we're at now. But hey, let's go check out some of these webcams while I'm waiting and see what kind of activity is going on here on the farm. First part of our farm is just absolutely gorgeous, but gorgeous, beautiful, and dangerous. Take a look here. Now, honestly, these ones are relatively tame compared. I mean, you can still see that goes up past my second knuckle, but these are the thorns of a honey locust. And this particular honey locust is still pretty immature, but you know, this is, it's thick with these, uh, but that's a topic in of itself, <laughs> but <clears throat> make sure you wear the appropriate gear. I don't have any blue jeans currently that don't have holes in them. I definitely don't want one of these puncturing my liner. So... Worst case scenario, if I can't rake them or shovel them all out, I'm just going to have them start taking from this side and putting it at the bottom of the pad and then scraping off the top of the pad if needed. It's going to work out. Praise the Lord. Yeah, so the other half with the dump truck, the other half of the sand just showed up and the skid steer. You can see the progress that was made today. It's been a long day. Uh, we had the, <clears throat> the skid steer that was brought out. It wasn't tracks, it was tires. Uh, however, it's all masonry sand, so when the sand all got pushed in, leveling it out with the skid steer was problematic. And then we lost the center piece, the center rebar piece right in the middle, so we had to spend some time digging that out. 
that was fun. But uh, anyhow, now just a little bit more leveling out. Um, probably gonna do that here in the next few days and we will be installing. So man, couldn't do it without some awesome help from the guys running the machines and some friends. So that is a day. Love y'all, praise Jesus. Thank you.